Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Bible Catholic channel here on YouTube and here on the podcast. Hope everyone has had a great week so far. And uh, thank you so much for joining me on this week's uh, program. What I want to talk about this week is what happened at the Easter Vigil. And we're basically what happened, where do we go from here? Especially if you just came into the church and especially for those of us who've been around for a while. So what I want to talk about is three ways to live out your baptismal vows. Okay, three ways to live out your baptismal vows. For those of you who were baptized at the Easter Vigil, the journey is just beginning. You answered the call of Christ and you were obedient to be baptized. But what now? You see, this is a great time in the church. We welcome a bunch of new members. But let's be honest, sometimes that's the last time, the last we see of them. Um, the simple fact of the matter is that some treat the Easter Vigil like a form of Catholic graduation. Um, baptism is kind of like your journey into the promised land, if you will. You're now in a state of grace, and all sin has been washed away. Now is not the time to be complacent. So you're probably right about now, you're probably calling me a buzzkill. But I give you this word of caution because I've been there. You see, when we become complacent, we become a prime target for Satan. He's looking for every opportunity to take us away from Christ. That was me within three years of coming into the church. And so I want to provide you with some guidance. And this is where those three things come in. First and foremost, it is imperative that you establish a prayer life. Prayer is our communication with God. Some struggle and think that we need elaborate words or requests. It's simply not the case, though. It could be as simple as reflecting on a passage of scripture, saying the rosary, um, practicing the Lectio Divina, Divine Mercy Chaplet, or just sitting in a quiet place reflecting on God. Whatever you choose to do is up to you. But try to have a dedicated space and time set aside every day. Make it part of your daily routine. Before you know it, it's going to become a habit. And you, you can't really get through the day without doing it. You're just like, oh, I forgot to pray today. I need to set some time aside to go do that. There's really no better way to start the day than spending time with your creator. Secondly, dose. Make it a habit to read scripture. I know it may seem elementary. Pray and read scripture? Um, tell us something we don't know, William. Well, life gets in the way sometimes. Before we know it, it could be days or weeks before we prayed, read scripture, unless we went to Mass, of course. But make it a habit to read scripture. The Bible is the Word of God, and it's given to us for our instruction. I read an acronym recently, and I'm sure you've heard it before, that says that the Bible stands for Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. Within its pages, you'll, you'll learn about some of the great men and women who preceded us, and we can learn from them. You'll learn more about the life of Christ and how to live the Christian life. It's a discipline that's going to draw you closer to the Lord. Third thing, find a way to get involved in your parish. I can't, under, I can't say this enough. So you're praying, you're reading scripture, Awesome. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Please keep doing it. We need to find a way to get involved with the parish. You see, at confirmation, you are sealed. You are sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit at confirmation. And you have a skill and a gift that will benefit your parish. Now, a lot of times when I talk about this, some people will say, they get hesitant. They say, look, I'm really not good at anything. I really don't have anything to offer. False. You do. You're needed. You're loved. You have something your parish needs. We're a family. And each member of the family has a part in its, in its success. You can join a parish prayer group, Bible study, or volunteer to clean the sanctuary. It all matters. It's all important. When you get involved... You make friends with like-minded people who will support you and love you in those times 
that aren't easy. Right now, if you've just come into the church at Easter Vigil, you're kind of on a high. You're kind of on a high. There's going to be a time where it's not going to be so easy. Who are you going to lean on? If you haven't connected with anyone in your parish that you can say, look, I need some help. Will you pray for me? Whatever the case is, get connected to your parish. So, so far, I've given you three things that can help you fulfill your baptismal vows. That's not an exhaustive list, but here the point is that you're just at the beginning of this journey. Even those of us who's, who have been in the church for a while, it's still a journey. It's a lifelong journey. It's never over. Okay? At the Easter Vigil, you receive the sacraments of initiation. Though you only receive baptism and confirmation once, we often reaffirm those commitments as reminders that our journey is never ending. It'll, it will only end at the end of our earthly lives. Let's forge ahead. Let's look forward. Let's let Christ lead us through his sacraments, through the church that he's given us. Let's not get complacent. Let's keep learning. Let's meet people. Let's get connected to our family. Those are three ways to help you fulfill your baptismal vows. Guys, thank you for joining me on this episode of the Bible Catholic Show. God bless you all. Please be assured of my prayers. I pray for all of you every day. Please pray for me as well. God bless you. Have a great day.